Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG. And today we have a request coming from one of our viewers, ArcStreams. And ArcStreams has asked us to take a look at what's the best technique of welding mild steel, sheet metal. Now, uh, he was requesting 16 gauge and we're here at the track at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and we were able to round up about 18 gauge material. So I think we can show you uh, a little bit about this. Anyway, what I've got here is just, it's mild steel, it's very low carbon steel, and you can tell that it's got a lot of uh, rust on it. So uh, all we did was we prepped it by going over to our power wire brush, wire brushing off the rust, and I'm, I'm placing it in this fixture right here. And this fixture is only for holding purposes. Uh, typically, we use this for welding titanium and inconels and things like that. But uh, there's no argon gas flowing from the backside, nor is there any needed. So I want to talk about the, the setup for this. You know, uh, ideally, in a lot of welding processes, you want to put a gap uh, in your part. And the gap is designed for penetration, typically. And sometimes you get gap and you don't want it. But in this particular case, we don't want gap. It's not our friend. So we're going to make this part fit up as tight as possible. We're going to tack weld it. And again, this, this purge block does not have purging in it. It's just for holding purposes. Now, the procedure is this. We're going to use a 2% thoriated tungsten, which we have ground to a point. And it's a 1 16th diameter, and it's 2% thorated. Have no fear, we're not losing 2% thorated tungsten. It's not going to disappear off the face of the planet. So you can use that, you can use serrated. There's a lot of alternative tungstens. I prefer this one. It holds the, the point much better, and, and it emits the arc initiation a lot better. So uh, my personal preference, we're going to be using argon gas, I've got a gas lens right here. Uh, gas is going to be flowing at 15 to 20 CFH. Now, on the machine, I've got a, a high frequency start. The arc initiation is going to start at about 5 amps. That's what I've requested the machine to do. Now, I'm using a Precision TIG 375, and you can actually ask it to start off at 2 amps. I don't need that for, for 18 gauge material. So, I've got High frequency start, it's only going to initiate the arc and then it'll, it'll disappear. Uh, DC electrode negative, or DC minus. Now, when we talk about pre-flow and post-flow, here's what I like to do. On the machine, there's a built-in half a second pre-flow. And what that's designed for is actually just to clean out the system, clean out the cables. And by the time you start welding, you've got gas coverage. Now the post flow to me is more important because what I do is I use the post flow also for the pre flow. And you say, well, why would you do that? Well, you get a surge of gas. If, if you get on your welding machine, you hit the foot control, you get this quick surge. What I like to do is I like to hit the, the post flow, let it run for about five seconds. Before that post flow goes off, I go ahead and hit the foot pedal again, start my arc initiation, and it's very low amps. So again, 15 to 20 CFH, there is no argon coming up from the back side. And finally, the filler material that I'm going to use. This, this filler material is ER70S2, and it's just a mild steel filler material. Uh, I like using 0.045 uh, diameter. Yeah, it just feeds a lot better. It wets a lot better, and I don't have to add a huge amount of amperage to get this to melt. Yeah, so that's pretty important, the eutectic of the puddle that you're, you're welding. So 045, and I'm just going to be dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. And I'm going to tack this part in a couple of places because it's going to have a tendency to try to move and it's going to try to overlap. And once it overlaps in this direction, boy, you, you're going to have nothing but distortion. So uh, you can put as many tacks as you want. So let me get my gear on. I'm going to tack it, weld it, and then I'll show you the results. Okay, what are my amps? 35. Okay. Go ahead and keep calling them out every 10 seconds. 39. Okay, steel, you know, typically doesn't weld 
quite as clean as some of the other materials. Just, you know, there's a lot of phosphorus in it. And you can see it actually kind of float to the top. Whoa, got a little wind. Okay, I had to stop abruptly just because there's a little bit of breeze coming through the doorway here. So I, uh, I resume the weld. I hesitate just a little bit. And I'm still getting a little bit of breeze, so I'm probably going to have to uh, shut the door. Anyway, it's, uh, it, it's welding up pretty clean. Okay, and at the end of the weld, add a little bit of extra filler, back off on the foot control, let it re-solidify, and there we are. Okay, we're running pretty slow travel speed. You'll probably notice a little bit of bubbling in the puddle, and that's just the metal itself. You're going to get that until you add filler, and your filler kind of stabilizes it. But it's just a constant dabbing technique. Dab, dab, dab. And, uh, you know, I'm not using a lot of amperage. I'm probably somewhere between uh, 30 amps or so. And the beauty behind TIG welding is you can get out of position and you can stop, restart your arc. Just make sure you overlap your start and stop. Okay, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to actually taper off, add a little extra filler. I do it on every alloy. And I back off and re solidify the puddle. And that's it. Okay, I'm repositioning. Start the arc again. Start exactly where I finished off. And what I do is I let the puddle get to full diameter and I back up just about a sixteenth of an inch and I start all over again. And there's, there's no... Uh, real hurry in this it's it's more artistic you know you're you're trying to run your tig torch and your foot control and add filler at the same time and i'm getting near the end of the plate so i'm going to go ahead and add a little extra filler back off i'm down to 10 seven about five amps and i hold the post flow in position for about five seconds here and that's it okay now that i finished welding i you know i welded maybe uh six inches and i stopped just about uh, one inch shy uh, I tell you what's, what's really critical, you probably heard me talking about stopping the arc adding filler. When you restart, make sure you start on the same exact place and then get things boiling and get it to liquid and then back up maybe a sixteenth of an inch. And Once you do that, then you'll tie in to your existing well and then you can take off running again. Do that as many times as you need to. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and take the plates out. Do a, little, uh, do a little visual inspection. Okay, now the first thing that I look for in a visual inspection is I, is I actually look at the top side first. And I look and see if the, the filler material is above the parent material. And if it is, I'm in good shape. If it drops below, then I could very easily have a weakness. 
but uh, a lot of times when you're doing sheet metal work and things like that, things are in a radius shape and they hold their, their shape real well. So take a look at this. I don't have any underfill anywhere. I don't see any cracks or transverse cracks or anything here. So top side looks pretty good. Now let me turn it over and let's take a look at the back side. And I do the same thing here. I don't need a lot of penetration, but I do need to make sure that it wets to both sides because a lot of times it'll try, try to go to one side and chill. Now, I did this with about 30 or 35 amps and the only way that I can succeed getting that small of a bead is my arc has to be very, very close, very, very tight and that correlates into voltage. So I'm probably running about nine volts. Now you as an operator can't see the voltage on your machine, but you certainly can see how close you, you get the, uh, the tungsten to the puddle. And of course the hazard of that is that if you get it too close, you're gonna contaminate your tungsten and you'll have to regrind. So uh, take a look at this. I just dabbed at a very consistent rate. You know, your dabs may be 10 dabs an inch and mine are 13. There's nothing wrong with either of them. You just make it consistent. So um, this one right here, this, this passes the visual inspection and uh, that pretty well wraps it up with uh, steel, carbon steel. Again, ER70S2.045 diameter. Thanks for watching Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig.